Hi everybody, Rachel here. First of all, I hope that you and yours are healthy and safe. Uh, you might be wondering what we've all been up to with the Schuster Center closed this past month. And while admittedly my favorite aspects of the job are unfortunately on hold, um, rehearsing and performing with my colleagues, sharing music with our audiences, one aspect of my job has been very much in full swing and that is reed making. So a lot of people don't realize that bassoonists and oboists have to make their own reeds from scratch, at least on the professional level. And there are a number of reasons for that, but the main one has to do with um, how customizable it needs to be for your own unique uh, preferences as a player, for how it matches the unique qualities of your individual instrument, the kind of sound you want, um, the kind of response, the way you want it to feel. And that's all built into the process. So it's something we take very seriously. Um, oboe and bassoon reeds are different and they have slightly different ways that they're built, but the principles are still the same. It controls uh, everything from your pitch to your tone, to the quality of articulation you get, your dynamic range. Uh, all the aspects of being a good musician are really built into that process. And it's something we have to really work on to uh, be able to deliver a great performance. So for those of you who are curious, uh, I'd like to show you a little bit about how it's done. So this here is my reed processing desk. It's not normally this clean, but I wanted you to be able to see everything and not have it covered in shavings, full disclosure. Um, and I've sort of set up a little evolution of man here so you can kind of see the various stages the reed goes through from tube to finished product. Um, so yeah, this is actually the cane itself. Uh, it's a species called Arando donax, but it's similar to bamboo. Nice hollow piece there. And that gets cut into four. And then from there, it goes through this little pre-gouger and then onto the gouger where it gets cut to the thinness that we want here. So we're in the part of the cane that's best suited for the reed. Um, from there, it goes on to this little shaper, which uh, helps me cut the hourglass shape into the right pattern that you see there. And then this part is cut by a profiler. Uh, the reed itself goes here, and then the blade kind of marries this pattern. And as you flip this part back and forth, it gets the same pattern on both sides, so it's symmetrical. Um, so you see here lots of my gouge-shaped and profiled cane that's gone through all those processes. Um, over here, I have a lot of gouged cane and some cane ready to be gouged. And then the next stage I call the mummy stage because it gets wrapped in string and then lays in internment for a while. Uh, at least a couple weeks, ideally a few months, these were set up to dry. And then I have um, a whole bunch kind of stored up in there. <laughs> and basically the reason you want to spend some uh, time on that is you've taken something that's flat and you've created a round base for it by, um, you know, putting it on this little mandrel and, you know, it causes a lot of stress on the cane. So the longer it can sit like that and kind of get used to its new shape, the more stable it's going to be. And then that gets unwrapped, opened up, um, some glue and some more wires get put on like here but the uh, it's a solid uh, piece at the moment so you need to then cut the opening and that's where you blow through and that's where those vibrations are created and that's actually where the hard part begins this is my desk over here for all that stuff I have a bunch of reeds in various stages of uh, being broken in and I've got uh, files and uh, pliers and things that help me uh, get the opening just right, um, scrape everything down to the right thickness, and, you know, test it for pitch, test it for tone, make adjustments as it breaks in, and hopefully have a great read for the concert or whatever the task at hand is. So, that's what I've been working on. Um, of course, I'm still practicing and looking forward to all the great music we have planned as soon as we can get back to it. Uh, definitely hope to see you at one of those performances when we get started again. And um, in the meantime, please be well and thanks for watching.